I'm from Buenos Aires, from Argentina, and I went to Germany when I was 18 years old. I wasn't that interested in this music growing up, it was rather a background presence. But when I was living abroad as a late teenager, I guess I got more interested in that background music from my youth. Piazzolla is known for the Nuevo Tango, the new tango. That's his own creation, an amalgam of many different kinds of music and at the same time a unique style in itself. Uh, we know how much of a mess it was when it came, when it came up. The old traditional tango musicians didn't react so nicely to this changes to tango music that Piazzolla was doing, they would say that's not tango. Uh, and we hear a little bit of everything in there. Of course it has the flavor of the old tango, but it has uh, some qualities of jazz, it has the power of rock, it has some of the inventiveness and disjunct melodies of contemporary classical music from that time, which means Hinocera, Stravinsky, Tra Stravinsky, Bartok. And it also has, you know, some Italian folk melody uh, aspects. It has some kind of rhythm from klezmer music. And it obviously has its own identity, which has continued to develop in other musicians, but Piazzolla remains still the big creator and master of new tango. Some critics would say that Piazzolla wrote a thousand times the same piece. He was very prolific, but I think there's a lot of variety in his music. And for me, every new piece, even in a set of pieces, it reflects so different qualities, so different musical stories. I enjoy seeing one fantastic mind and exploring different moments of the life of the artist and getting into the world, into the head of this artist and exploring the different periods, the different even in one period, the different styles. That's one of the beautiful things of doing one concert or one album about a composer. Legacy is just a title, but at the same time, it has a little bit to do with how much of a classic this music has become only 25 years after the death of Astor. Another piece that I like a lot is Esqualo. It was also dedicated to one of the violinists in Piazzolla's quintet. Uh, Suarez Paz was a wonderful violinist and Piazzolla kind of, he always wanted to do these jokes and compose this quiet, difficult piece for the violin with changing meters, kind of wanting to throw him off. That's a very energetic piece. It opens the album and it's a lot of fun to play.
Violin was one of the first instruments in tango together with the flute and the guitar. In a way we are giving every instrument, but especially the violin, a very important role. We are through that it gives me the opportunity to kind of sing different roles in one piece, represent different characters, and it's a beautiful challenge to see how much you can do. On top of that, there's also all these effects that Piazzolla uses in his music. There's the chicharra, this scratchy noise that we do by playing behind the bridge. There's the tambor, an effect, percussive effect that we do by doing a pizzicato while putting a nail against the string in the fingerboard. There's also the latigo, kind of a whip that we do that's very fast glissandi going down or up or this pretty inaudible glissandi or sometimes I also at the end of a phrase I will do a note slightly um, flat in order to either imitate a voice or give that feeling of decadence that a certain phrase has. My favorite piece in this album is Bardarito. Uh, this tune is dedicated to Elvino Bardaro. Bardaro was one of the famous violinists of the Guardia Vieja, the old tango musicians, and he also played in one of Piazzolla's groups. He was known for a beautiful tone, a unique vibrato, and I guess I just love this tune. It has a very melodic introduction and then a sort of jazzy, a fast middle part. Darito was quite challenging to record. We invited two percussionists and a double bass player to join us and to put all of that together to be able to have that flexibility that I enjoy in Astro's music, being able to pull and push the tempo but having the percussion being on top of the beat at a very high speed wasn't easy to do, yet a lot of fun. Piazzolla's music is not the most challenging technically, yet I like recording it in, let's say, a very violinistic way. The arrangements that I do uh, or the arrangements that I choose, as well as the tempi, I, we take usually quite fast tempi and that's a personal choice in a way to reflect the, the harshness, the, the punchiness, the edginess of this music. But also we are playing this music a lot of times with two or three instruments in comparison to five, six or eight. So we are reducing a little bit the material and therefore we need to augment somehow the energy. There's two pieces that are particularly touching. To me, I think Milonga del Angel has a melody that is just <laughs> irresistible. And uh, Adios Nonino, obviously the thematic, we all know that he wrote it when his father died. Four Seasons of Buenos Aires might be one of Piazzolla's most famous compositions. 
He didn't actually write it as a set. He brought them individually. He first brought uh, Primavera, Spring, and later on added the others. And he didn't always play them as a set. It's very nice. Uh, that's Buenos Aires is the city where I lived uh, right now less than half of my life. Yet is where I come from is this crazy, huge, chaotic city. And I think as much as music can reflect um, situations, landscapes, or anything in words, uh, Piazzolla's music is, is the music of Buenos Aires. Many of Piazzolla's pieces are about madness. Uh, let's take Balada para un loco or Revirado, which means uh, kind of crazy in Buenos Aires slang, Lunfardo. Uh, even Fracanapa is about the absurd. All of those, uh, and about decadence, all of those are somehow connected to something crazy. And of the ways how it translates in the performance, I think, is that aspect that is already in the tangos de la Guardia Vieja, the old tangos with the flexibility of rhythm. rhythm but I think that it goes to an extreme in Piazzolla, the 332, the ta And all those rhythms, the percussive effects, are add to that violence that he that is inherent in tango from the compadrito, those men. Uh, in the beginnings of tango that would have knife fights in Buenos Aires in the, and that music that originated in the Bordels, but also of Piazzolla's growing up many years later in uh, Manhattan that was filled from immigrants, there were fights, there was violence. so much madness and absurd and decadence that this music kind of relaxes and shows us good there's also a little bit of a joke in all of this mm -hmm. 